love at the age of 70. In 2007, although English, my wife and I had been happily living for the past 19 years in the house that we'd built in the Turkish countryside. Then, after a short illness, my wife of almost 40 years died, leaving me alone apart from my faithful dog, Oscar. After her death at the age of 78, I had no thoughts of getting married again. However, a few years later, I thought a woman companion would be good. It was while talking online with a Turkish lady, she said, My cousin Galdan, whose husband died ten years ago, speaks better English than me. If you like, I'll send you her photo. After I agreed, she sent me Galdan's photo. I thought she looked a serious person, so told her cousin. I then received an email from Galdan. It was short and to the point. I am not a gloomy old owl. I had to chuckle as I could imagine the steam coming from the keyboard as she wrote it. Despite this, it proved the start of our corresponding with her daughter, Konka, helping Galdon to send me emails. Sometime later, I received one from Galdon that read, I'm coming down to Antalya with my cousin Isil. We are booked in at a hotel there. As Galdon had mentioned she liked antiques, I thought there must be a fair there. When I said this, to my surprise, she said, no, I am coming down to see you on your birthday in December. With Antalya only an hour's drive from my house, we arranged to meet up. As it would be our first time of meeting, I felt apprehensive when I walked into their hotel. When I found Golden sat on a sofa in the lobby, I thought she looked most attractive and much younger than her age, 68. Then, when she stood to greet me, I found she was shorter than I imagined. Still, with me at six foot one, this should not have come as a surprise. After Isol went off exploring, Galdon and I spent the day talking. In the evening, as we walked along, with the uneven pavements, I suggested Galdon held my arm. She did. Then her hand slipped down and her fingers touched mine. I can only say that the feeling I received was like an electric shock. From that moment, I knew that we would become much more than friends. On my later return home, I felt happy and looking forward to seeing Galdon the next day, my birthday. After my return to Antalya using a friend's car, I brought Galdon and Isol back to my house. Here I was pleased to find Galdon liked dogs, with her making a big fuss of Oscar. Later, while sat drinking coffee, to my surprise, Galdon handed me three presents. The first, she said, was for my birthday the second for Christmas, and the third for the New Year. To my further surprise, Galdon had also brought me a birthday cake. I was totally unprepared for her generosity, but said, One minute. I rushed upstairs and looked through a selection of presents I had brought back from trips to South Africa. From these I picked out a pewter statue of a cheetah holding a candlestick. As I handed it to Galdon, her eyes lit as she thanked me. After we had eaten the birthday cake, I drove Galdon and Isil into Kemmer. I showed them around the marina, then drove them back to their hotel. In the evening, the last before they returned home, Galdon and I went out for a drink. With found everywhere packed, so sat out in a garden bar near a blazing open fire. Here we sat holding hands and talked until midnight. With regret, I squeezed her hand. I'd best go. You have an early flight in the morning. Then, with a heavy heart, I drove back home. Before Galdon left, we had arranged I would go to Istanbul and stay in a hotel near her house for a few days. We could then get to know each other better. However, our plans were unexpectedly changed when I awoke one morning feeling strange. I called my friend Simul, who drove me to my doctor's friend's hospital in Kemmer. After an examination, I was taken by ambulance to his new hospital in Antalya. Here, to my shock and surprise, I had three stents fitted in my heart. When I later called and informed Galdon, she gasped in horror. Her next words came as a welcome surprise. Once you are out of hospital, I will come down and look after you. To my delight, a few hours after my arrival home from hospital, Simol brought Galdon to my house. Once he had gone, we enjoyed talking, while cuddled together on the sofa. Once I was able, along with Oscar, 
Galden and I went out for short walks. Then, unbelievable as it might sound, during the five days she stayed, we fell in love. Before she returned home, to my surprise and delight, Galden said, I want you to come to Istanbul. You can stay with me so that I can then look after you. As it would mean our being together, I was happy to agree, and arranged for Seymour to look after Oscar. On the day Galden was due to fly home, I had a checkup booked at the hospital. So we called in on the way to the airport. While there, I collapsed and awoke to find myself in bed with Galden sat looking anxiously at me. Despite wanting to stay, she could not, so Seymour drove us to the airport. With a storm blowing when I kissed her goodbye, I could not relax until we spoke after she arrived home. When I left my home to go to Istanbul, I knew things would go well with Galden, so had packed a big case. However, it never crossed my mind that I would not be returning. At Istanbul, I found Galden waiting along with Konka. It was good to see her, as it was her who had helped Galden send me emails. On arrival at Galden's home, it turned out to be a four-bedroom apartment. Once settled in, Galden and I would meet up with Konka and Yaprak, her other daughter, who both made me welcome. While sat talking one day, I asked Galden, Would you like us to get married or live together? To my delight, she said, Let's get married. We then made plans to get married on Galden's birthday at the end of March. We were so happy, we booked flights and hotel reservation in Paris for our honeymoon. Unfortunately, due to my being English, before we could book our wedding, we first had to obtain various papers and undergo some medical tests before we could book our wedding. In the meantime, we decided to have our honeymoon before the wedding. Paris was great, with our having a fabulous time. On our return to Istanbul, we completed getting all the necessary paperwork for our marriage. Then, after informing our friends and family of the date of our wedding and reception, we found this impossible. We had to obtain a signed government paper on the day of our marriage. As the office was not open on a Saturday, the day of our wedding, we had to change the date at the last minute. As a result, some of our guests were unable to attend. However, despite this, we were at last married, with our reception going well. Since being married for the past eleven and a half years, Galden and I have enjoyed a great time together. Apart from Paris, Galden and I have visited England, Ukraine, and Georgia. Only one thing spoiled things. Due to regulations, Oscar could not live with us. So, with regret, I left him with Simal, who looked after him until he died. Now, although I am almost eighty-three and Galden eighty, we are still much in love. We always hold hands wherever we go walking around, and apparently known locally as the loving couple. While out sat cuddled together taking a rest, several people have commented on how happy we look. One woman stopped and said, I only hope I look as happy as you do when I'm your age. Another woman said, You look so happy, you must be in love. One woman asked if she could take our photo. Now, despite our passing years, each day we always tell each other, I love you. Some afternoons we take a lie down cuddled together. Then, come night time before going to sleep, we say I love you, while enjoying a kiss and a cuddle. Then, in the mornings, enjoy a cuddle before getting up. Without a doubt, Golden's cousin did us a huge favor when she said her cousin spoke better English than she. As such, we always give thanks for her putting us together. <laughs>